cool. How's it going, makers? It's Devin here again with May Anything. In my last video, I showed you guys how this curved hole straight pull illusion works. Actually, I don't even know if you would call this an illusion. It's kind of just like a really cool little desk toy. Anyways, I told you guys I would make a video explaining how I went through the process of making this. So, here we are. So I made this model from scratch without really planning too much ahead of time. So it involved a lot of noodling around and just messing with things. To show you that would be a very unorganized and messy video. So I'm just going to try to go through and touch on everything without spending way too much time on this video. But if you really want to know every single detail, make sure to check out the link in the description where you can get the model itself and play around with it for as long as you want. Anyways, let's jump into SolidWorks. So since I'm making this from scratch without a real reference, I started by building the mechanisms, the parts that are actually moving, um, because that's kind of what will dictate the rest of my model. So I start with this ring, which is going to be the gear part of the turntable. So I create this channel and make the walls two millimeters thick. What I did here was just sketch one line straight up, and then I used the circular pattern to repeat that line all the way around 76 times. And that's basically going to dictate my gears. So I have all these lines, but when I extrude, I use selected contours to just extrude that single line. That's easier than extruding the whole gear at once, because this way I can put a variable fillet here. Since it gets a little wider, I made the fillet get wider as well. Then I can select the fillet and the boss extrude, and then use the circular pattern feature to create 38 instances of that same gear. So 38, that's 76 divided by 2. And that means the width of the space between the teeth is the same as the width of the teeth themselves. So I'll extrude another circle, that's going to be my second gear. I'm going to rotate that top disc just a little bit so that the gear is centered in relation to my next gear because I'm just eyeballing these cuts. So I center that and I do a cross section so that I can sketch a tooth that fits with the gear. And then I can do another circular pattern using that cut with the edge of my circle being the parameter for which the pattern to follow. And that creates another nice looking gear. This is just a toy so I don't need the gears to be fitting together perfectly. I just want one gear to be able to turn the next relatively smoothly. So I kind of just eyeball the teeth here. So you can see the teeth for the gear are wider near the outside of that big gear and they get narrower on the inside. So I have to taper the small gear to match that change in width. So once again I tapered it just by eye until it looked like those gears wouldn't run into each other. The next thing I did was extrude another donut shape on top of that turntable gear and that will make the actual turntable surface. I make that wider than the gear, that way there's a ledge on the inside and outside that the turntable can sit on. So now I'm going to sketch most of the body using one revolve. So if I do a cross section here, you can see how I created the sketch in relation to that turntable gear. So you can see where the turntable will sit on my body, and I give a 0.6 millimeter tolerance on the inside and outside of that turntable, which is a tight enough fit to look good, but loose enough that it won't get caught or anything. If this was being manufactured, this giant solid area would be hollowed out, but since we're 3D printing and I can just use a really low infill, it'll actually save material if I just make this solid. I add a fillet for looks, and then it's time to start building the handle that will turn the gears. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a hole through the body where the handle is going to fit. So I create that hole in relation to this little gear, and then I'm going to do the extrude cut only through the main part of the body. Next, I created a plane on the very edge of my circle. That way I could create a flat lip where my handle is going to connect. And my favorite way to create reference planes wherever is by just sketching a single line. Then by selecting one end of the line and the line itself, you have enough references to create a plane. So yeah, I've got that flat surface now, and then I'll just blend it into the body with a fillet. Now it's time to create the straight pole, which is obviously a very important part of this illusion. And you'll notice it takes quite a few planes to make this pole. The reason being that this pole kind of goes along a weird axis that I have to create myself. It's not aligned with the right plane or the front plane or any plane that already exists. So I'm going to create a few references to make this pole. 
So what I did was just create two sketches, each with a single point. The first point is the bottom of the pole, and the second point is the top of the pole. Then I create a reference plane that goes through both those points, and is also perpendicular to the top plane. Then I'm going to sketch a line on that new plane that shows where the pole itself is going to be. Then I create one more reference plane that is perpendicular to that new sketch. This final reference plane is the one I'm going to use to create the pole. And all it takes is sketching a circle and extruding in both directions. And I'm not going to merge, I just extrude so that I have this little extra bit that goes straight down to the plate. I fill it at the top of the pole just to match the rounded feel of my whole model. And then I'll do an extrude cut to get rid of that excess pole that I don't need. And I make sure to use the feature scope to only select that pole so I'm not cutting away my entire body again. So here's the kind of secret part where I revolve that pole around the center axis using the circular pattern tool. So I create 60 equally spaced instances of that same pole to show the path it takes as it spins around this turntable. And that creates this new shape, which is a hyperboloid. I'm going to make another cross section through the right plane. And you can see the cross section of that hyperboloid is exactly the shape I need to create my hole. So I created the box to contain the hole itself, and then I just used the spline tool to freehand the shape of that hole. Then I'm going to go through and make these linear cuts just to add some style and also to reduce the amount of material I'm using. To make the pole stick into the platform, I create a sketch that matches the bottom of this pole and extrude it straight down so I've got this little bit that I can stick into the turntable. And then I'll use that same sketch with a 0.24mm offset to cut a hole into the turntable that I can stick the pole into. So now I go back to working on the handle. So I switch back to the cross-section view, and I sketch this shape here, which is going to be my handle. So as you can see, the sketch is 4mm wide, and then I also extrude it from the mid-plane 4mm. So I create a matching cutout in the gear so that the handle can fit through. And that's one reason I make this a square handle and not a circle, because now when I turn the handle, the gear will turn with it. The other reason I make it square is because I can print it without supports. Although I don't want it to be so square, so I put a 45 degree chamfer on all the edges. So just like I created that flat surface on the outside of my model where the handle is, I'm going to create two more on the inside of the model, where I'm going to put the bearings that hold this handle in place. Because right now you can see the handle is kind of just floating in the middle of this channel. So what I've got to do is make another revolved sketch. And I sketch out these little top hat shapes, which are going to be my bearings. And just like I made that square cutout through the gear, I'll do the same cutout through the bearings. So now the handle can connect to all these parts, and I'm just going to glue them together in the actual model. So I also made this end piece for the handle, which is actually two parts, but it prints in one part. So this is another revolve, and basically it's got this little notch that's going to hold these two parts together, but the inside cylinder can rotate freely of the outside cylinder. And the reason I do that is so that you can turn the thing more comfortably. So I'll give that little handle a fillet to match my form language, and of course I'll do that square cut so that I can fit the pieces together. And of course, just for a touch of professionalism, I went ahead and cut my logo in the bottom of the piece. And if you want to see how I did that, just check out my camera lens cap tutorial where I do the same thing. So there we go. I've got all my parts, and it's off to the printer. I printed this model using a wood fill, which is a filament that is kind of infused with wood chips, and that gives it a nice feel. It does leave a lot of these little stringy bits, but they were pretty easy to just scrape off. The hole is also printed in wood fill, so you can see that's also super stringy. But I really enjoy using the wood fill. It smells nice while you're printing, and it just feels nice and sands easily. Here are those little bearings. I've got the gear. And here's that handle bit. You can see how it rotates. I've got the rest of my handle, the turntable. They're all there. Once I've got all my parts, I just need to assemble that handle, which requires a bit of gluing. I probably could have made these parts just hold together by friction, but I just used super glue, that way I could avoid the trial and error of trying to get a perfect fit. First I assemble the inside parts without gluing it, just to make sure everything rotates smoothly, and once I'm sure that works, I can go ahead and finish gluing everything into place.
Then I can just snap in the hole and the pole and we're good to go. guys well that's my little run through for this straight pole curved hole hyperbolic pole hyperpole whatever you want to call it thing I hope you learned something if you still have questions feel free to ask in the comments I always try to respond to serious questions and I hope you'll subscribe and check out my other videos I've got a backlog of projects that I want to show you so please stick around until then I'm Devin it's make anything adios Getting very sleepy. Yes, you're finding a strong urge to subscribe to my channel and to like every single video. Yes, the urge grows stronger.